Hello and welcome to the final video in our beginners quad build series that's been running over the past seven or eight weeks. It's been quite an adventure. We started off with just a set of components and through each of the videos we've talked about why you might choose those particular components, what to think about and then in the past two or three videos we've actually put this thing together. So if you are finding this video on its own and you want to know how to build a quadcopter and hopefully avoid the majority of all the technology words and acronyms that get confusing when you're looking at building this for your first time then this series is going to be for you. I'd recommend you start at the beginning. For those of you that have been with me through the entire process you'll know that last time we finished and we had this model flying and it was fantastic to see it take to the air after so many weeks and there's only a couple of things we need to do to finish this out because this is a quadcopter this is what we all used to build very basic version of this this is quite a sophisticated piece of kit but a very basic version of this just for line of sight flying and that's where you stand at the edge of the field and you fly it by looking at it up and down. Now, of course, we're going to add the FPV stuff to this as well. So we're going to add two things inside. And that's why if I look in the bag of bits that I've got left over from the frame kit, I can see that we have these little uh, squidgy pieces that are designed to hold the camera in place. And we also have a couple of extra little bolts and pieces too. And that is to put the camera in the nose of the model and also to install a video transmitter. Now, let's talk about the camera first of all. We talked about what we've done to choose it. This is a little Runcam Swift. You can tell that because it's got a little Swift painted on the top. Now, modern cameras these days tend to have a pretty wide voltage range. Back in the day, they all wanted either 5 or 12 volts. These days, they'll run from anything to 5 to 36. But check the spec of the individual camera that you're looking at. They come in lots of different sizes. This one is a full-size camera and it's going to fit nicely. If I kind of grab the front, you can get an idea. It's going to fit in there like that, with those cheap pieces each side, providing a friction fit to hold it into place. So there are only three cables coming out the back of the camera like this. Uh, one of them is to power it, so that's going to be a positive voltage. Uh, I tend to use 5 volts for all the cameras, even if they can support a higher voltage. Uh, black is going to be ground, and the yellow is going to be the video. And actually, on the back of the camera, wait for the camera to focus, you can see it's actually labelled up. So that needs to be connected onto the flight controller, so that the image from the camera goes into the flight controller. And then we need a video transmitter. Now, this is what I'm going to use. I'm quite a fan of this. I think these are really cool little things. This is the Atlatl HV. It'll actually run from 7 to 42 volts. But we're going to be running a 4S battery on this model. So that's about 16 volts. So I'm going to run it directly from the battery voltage. So you'll see here that there's quite a few wires that we're going to have to connect up onto the flight controller for this and clip in like that so if we look at the wires that we get out the back of this we're going to have a red for power i'm going to supply that to the battery voltage pin on the flight controller we have the black for ground we have the video and we also have another one this kind of light blue color that is to allow you to control the settings in the video transmitter the channel band the power even from the flight controller itself which is very clever now, the connections for both of these things are actually covered in the manual. And again, this is why I said at the beginning, try and get equipment that has really good manuals because it makes it a lot easier. Now, all of the connections for this technology are in this section here on the flight controller. You have the video in, VI, that's the one from the camera. Video out, V out is the one that's going to go to the video transmitter. And then we also have a ground and plus 5 volts we can use to power the camera. And a ground and a battery voltage pin that we can use to power the atlatl, which is the video transmitter. There's also one of the connection that I will make, and that is for the smart audio connection. And that is the one, that if we go back to the desk, that's actually this thing here. That's going to be the one that allows us to control everything. Now, in the old days, the way it used to work was we connect the camera directly to the video transmitter, and then the video transmitter would send the image down to our goggles. We don't do that now. The reason it goes through the flight controller 
is that the flight controller can overlay an on-screen display and it kind of looks a little bit like this and that on-screen display allows you to see the battery status if you have a barometer it allows you to show you things like height it'll show you the current that's being pulled it can show you all kinds of really cool stuff and it's very handy when you're flying around just to keep an eye on when it's time to come in and land at your feet so if we look at where we're going to place these things in the frame now the challenge that we have is there isn't a lot of room above the stack and the frame uh, this top plate here that the battery is on is adjustable that's what those other kind of uh, but it's on the top position so that's the maximum amount of room but there's a ton of room here behind the flight controller on top of this little rubberized support which vibration isolates all the cameras uh, if you remember we used the front one for that little receiver that's working perfectly so that's where i'm going to put the video transmitter and obviously the camera's going to go on the front so let me just take the top off this and let's start installing all of this equipment so before we can start snipping any wires off we need to actually install the pieces into the back of the quadcopter now the atlatl is probably going to sit here on the back as we've discussed um, and the antenna is going to go through one of these holes at the back lots of different options for where we're going to pop that through uh, so that shouldn't be a problem so what if i put it there on the frame then that will be able to turn around without getting too tight and then the cables can run under the flight controller and be made off as per the manual so that looks promising let me get some double-sided tape i'll pop a piece of double-sided tape underneath and then pop a cable tie over the top and that should keep everything in place the camera installation is really simple too. Just undo the screws on both sides of the frame, slip in these kind of rubberized 3D printed pieces and they provide a friction fit. It's quite stiff, but that's designed to be. And once that's in, do up all the screws on the frame and there it is. And the friction fit is great on this frame with a full size camera. It will stay in position beautifully and you can move it though with firm pressure. Uh, I tend to find pointing forward is great if you're a very new pilot learning to fly FPV. But for most pilots who have a bit of experience, you have it up kind of 20, 30 degrees sometimes. Now we have those installed. We have a rough idea how long the cables need to be. So now I can make the cables off. So I'm going to have to route the cables for the video transmitter around into that kind of area. I'll route them underneath the flight controller so that they're not banging into the vibration isolated little board at the top of the flight controller and the camera stuff can go. I'll leave the camera stuff reasonably long and then it'll fit. Let me just show you how the video transmitter has fitted on. So yep, with it in place with the cable tie, that works beautifully actually, popped out the back. So that was a good choice. I just removed the top. Let me show you what it looks like inside. So there's the atlatl all installed. And now it's just a case of making off these wires. So we're gonna make them off in exactly the same way as we've done with all the other soldering on the model. We're gonna clip them to length, remove a little bit of wire, pre-tin those wires so it's got solder on already and then we're going to pop them into the holes where they're supposed to be and using the soldering iron just dribble a little bit of solder around the hole with a fine tip so that it connects the pre-tinned wire to the pad and then it'll look like this now with all the cables in place then it's just a case of putting everything together we're going to have to plug the cable into the camera and put the canopy back on and then we're also going to have to make sure that we attach and use the little retaining nut that's going to keep the antenna mount onto the back of the frame as well now the thing we have to do as soon as we've got this together is we do need to pop some kind of antenna on the antenna mount you should never power a video transmitter without an antenna installed if you do there's a chance you might damage it so my advice is whenever you have something like this just pop an antenna on and it's going to be safe so there it is it is all built so the last thing to do now we've done all that is to configure the on-screen display inside Betaflight. The OSD tab allows you to select how you want all the different pieces to appear and you can configure it exactly the way that you'd like. Spend a bit of time in here. Don't go too mad is my advice. It's very tempting when you first start out to have everything turned on but it's very very distracting when you're flying FPV. I tend to only have things like the timer running, my pilot name, the mode I'm in, 
and things like the battery status in the lower left hand corner and that's enough to give me all the information that I need. Once that is done, save it onto your quadcopter and then it's just a case of popping in a fresh battery, grabbing your FPV goggles and then going out and having a fly. So thank you to everybody that has stayed with this series all the way through. Hopefully for those of you that have been interested in building a quadcopter, you've now got an idea of the process you need to go through to get to the other end and have everything working. Again, a really important part of this is picking the right components. And things like the Hollybro Fright Controller, things like the Brain FPV stuff is really good and makes for a very simple build. There are cheaper options available, but those cheaper options tend to require just a little bit more work. And if you are an engineer by background or you have a very analytical brain or kind of like electronics, then you'll probably get away with cheaper stuff and won't bump into any problems. But if it's your first time build and you want to go for something easier, it can be a false economy sometimes to go for those cheaper pieces because you can make mistakes and destroy stuff and end up having to buy two or three or just getting really frustrated with the build. So please check out the other playlists on the channel. Lots of other playlists kicking around, introduction to and beginner's guide to. Check out the playlist. And thanks again for staying with it right to the very end of the series. And as always, happy flying. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlists, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.